Peeps. Welcome to today's vlog. Did you know that peeps is not short for people? It's short for peepers. It is already three o'clock and I'm just now starting the vlog. Um, I've already filmed some clips from earlier that we will go ahead and insert later in the video here, but I don't have an intro yet, so I figured I would do that. I'm actually on my way to head to Fred Meyer right now to grab some change. We are very low on ones. What is up with my hair? We're very low on ones and we have like two fives left, um, but we have a bunch of 20s. So the bank is closed because it's Sunday and I have to go to Fred Meyer to try and get some change. Hopefully they will give me <laughs> enough. But um, yeah, it's been kind of busy. That's why I haven't really had a chance to film too much. We have a few trade-ins to show as well that I'll show you guys um, as soon as I get back. Uh, but we filmed a clip with Richard earlier that, um, is a feel-good moment, so check it out. So, yeah. Richard, you have done a lot of repairs for us and a lot of work and stuff over this past year, and you don't really ask for much in return, and we kind of feel like it's very nice of you, obviously, but it's not fair. So we are going to give you the Leaf Lone Fourth Rose cabinet for free. Are you kidding? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Hello. And you knew about this? Yeah. Because <laughs> I know you wanted it, but... <laughs> How's it going, guys? So it's yours. Hi. Well, Looking for anything I don't even know what to say, like, besides <laughs> thank you. Like, yeah, man. Well, so bro hug. <laughs> I thought it'd be cool to to hook you up with it because I know you wanted it and everything. Since I was like an ankle biter, I wanted that thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, and you, you know, we do give you things here and there that, that you're interested in, but mm -hmm. I never felt like it was enough. enough. Well, thank you guys so, so much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I will talk to our guy and see if when he brings in a new cabinet, if he can help you move that one. All right. And then we'll get it all set up. Sweet deal. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> all right, guys. We have a few trades to go through here. So we'll start off with this one. We have Cruisin' Exotica. Needs to be cleaned up. And then a worn but complete copy of Super Mario 64. Box is kind of jacked up, as you can see. But it is a complete copy. Just not in the best shape, but still cool. That's two days in a row now. We've had complete in box N64 games trailing in, which is very unusual, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> then we have two stacks of NES games here. We have Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, Bo Jackson Baseball, NASCAR Challenge. A lot of them have like this black. I think someone wrote their name on them and then somebody else went back over and sharpied them out. Wheel of Fortune, Tetris, Golf, Skater Die, Nintendo World Cup, Anticipation, and Sesame Street ABC. And then we have Paperboy, Tecmo Bowl, Hogan's Alley, Dr. Mario, Tetris 2, Castlevania, Super Spike V-Ball, Magic Johnson's Fast Break, Metroid, Marble Madness, and Turtles 2 the Arcade Game. So that was a nice little bundle there. And then Derek, who... You guys might remember the video where a customer tried to like undercut me or whatever and try to buy something from one of, from someone else who's in the store selling to me. The customer who was selling me the stuff that day was Derek and he came in again. He's also the guy we got our very first rule of rose from. Really good guy. But he came in and traded in some stuff here. So he brought these systems here, Super Nintendo, N64, Genesis Model 2, and PS1. Um, there's also controllers and cables for the majority of those. And then this box is also from him. There's a PS2 Slim, brand new uh, nunchuck. There's some Xbox controllers, PS2. There's a GameCube adapter, third party, but there's that. There's Wii remotes in here. There's a couple Ninja Turtle figures. And uh, just like there's a, a PSP that he bought with no battery for five bucks and I'm taking a chance on it. Um, but some other weird modes and some stuff in there. There's another, another Ninja Turtle. Um, so there's that. And then these 
third party controllers came from him as well as the super scope adapter and then this stack right here so we have a couple memory cards and drawn to life for ds which we do not have a case for then we have a factory sealed soul caliber 3 twisted metal head-on which i've never seen the ps2 version i've only seen the psp version but i thought that was kind of cool olympic gold ba barcelona 92 for genesis disc only baldur's gate dark alliance Star Wars Battlefront, Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories, Dark Cloud, Star Ocean, Last Hope International, and then My Street for PS2, and then some PS1 memory cards in there. So that, there was a, a few other memory cards that I was going to keep, just some PS2 ones. Uh, that was everything that he brought in. And then Abby said that this little bundle came in yesterday, and she must have taken it in while I was gone or something, because I never saw this. So we have Kingdom Hearts, the story so far, which I've never even seen, but that's really cool. Another Red Dead Redemption 2. I just sold one of these about five minutes ago. And then L.A. Noir and Last of Us Remastered. And then we have two other trades. So these are the two other trades here. It was a brother and sister who traded stuff in separately, but I combined the trades because they came in at the same time. So we have a Nintendo NES watch. It's a 8-bit Luigi. I thought that was really cool. I couldn't find any of these on eBay, active or sold, so I don't really know what it's worth. We'll probably price it at like $19.99, but I just thought that was kind of cool. I think that's backwards. There we go. And then we have a World of Nintendo Link figure, which Link looks a little weird, but there's that. And we have Injustice 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Ghostbusters, the video game. Far Cry compilation, which I've never seen before. And then Time Splitters 2 for GameCube. And then finally we have the Arcade Classics little mini Joust arcade here. It is in the original box, but as you can tell, it's not sealed or anything. It's definitely been opened and played with, but pretty cool stuff. And I believe that's everything so far from today. Abby had to run home because <laughs> her mom said that it looks like um, Zelda is locked out of the house. She's like out in the catio, but I think we closed the windows before we left, and so she's been out there for a while. So Abby's going to let her back in. Luckily, it's all enclosed, so it's not like she's, you know, nothing's gonna happen. She'll be fine. She can be outside for a few hours, but that's everything that's come in so far. I've really been trying to work on cleaning this place up. I know it looks like a complete mess, but if you look over here, made some good progress. Uh, I've gotten a lot of boxes broken down and taken out to the recycling. I have a couple boxes in the recycling can here that I've taken down. Um, just trying to work on cleaning this place up because we have a new employee that starts in only a couple days. So we have another trade that I forgot. Abby took this one in earlier today. We have a 2DS XL, blue and black one here, which is has just been restored. I think Abby was just charging it. And then we have a Glacier Game Boy Advance. The battery cover has a tab broken, but we have extras, so it's not a big deal. And it looks like we have a Comfort Grip. We have a Top Grip thing, or whatever that is. Then we have this weird Go Retro Portable from Retrobit. Um, I don't really know, like, what we're gonna do with this thing. <laughs> we'll figure something out. I don't know what it's worth. We have a Game Boy Camera. We have F1 Race for Game Boy, SpongeBob Video for Game Boy Advance, Mario Advance 4, Mario Brothers 3, and then some DS and 3DS games in here, which I can't pick them up, but I haven't checked to see if we have cases for these yet. I'm sure we do for at least a few. We have Super Mario 3D Land, Ultimate NES Remix, New Super Mario Bros., Angry Birds, Star Wars, and Mario Party DS. So, I know for a fact we have cases for those two, which would be here and here. And then, let's see, Angry Birds, Star Wars, Mario 3D Land, and Ultimate NES Remix. So, I don't see Angry Birds. So, Super Mario 3D Land. There's a case for that one. And then Ultimate NES Remix. Um, I 
don't think we have one of those. So that is the, those are the only two we do not have cases for. So those three are now complete. So kind of what I expected is what happened. Abby got home and the window was actually open. So I guess the cats were just outside all day and it just, and it looked like they were locked out, but they weren't, so everything's fine. So for the past few days, Abby and I have been playing, each have been playing Moonlighter for the Switch. We have two copies, so she's been playing on her Switch. She's been uh, setting the Switch down, like on the bed, and then she's using the Pro Controller to play, and I've been playing on the TV with my Switch docked. So we've both been really enjoying the game. You guys have been hearing us talk about it for the past couple days. Cooper hogs the TV and Abby has to play in handheld mode. Mm, true. So, <laughs> I, I was watching another YouTuber who, and I've, I've known about this for a while, but they have an Amazon affiliate link in the description of their videos. It's, a, it's someone who talks about music, and whatever album they're talking about, they put the Amazon affiliate link in the description. So if you want to buy the album that they're reviewing, you can click on their link, and if you buy it, then they get like a little kickback, a percentage or a commission basically. So I joined the Amazon Associates program. Um, no extra charge to the buyer. Yeah, it's, it's just clicking on the link is all. Yeah, so I joined and I created a link to Moonlighter for the Switch, which is the exact version that Abby and I are both playing. Um, so essentially how it works is if you are interested in buying Moonlighter for the Nintendo Switch off of Amazon, all you have to do is click the link in the top of the description down below. It'll take you to the Amazon page, and all you have to do is put it in your cart and check out like normal. And if you do that, because you clicked on our link, we will get a small percentage of whatever your order is. So it is essentially an easy way to support us or to support the channel without having to do anything, basically. If you're already going to buy the game on Amazon, if you use our link, the only thing that's different about your experience is that we get a little bit of money from it, and it's a very small amount. I don't think it's anything it's like special, <laughs> but hopefully, um, you know, if if enough people use our link, and this won't be the only time that we do it, I'm thinking whatever game we're currently playing or we're talking about, uh, we'll probably probably make a link for that item. The only thing about it is that you have to go through Amazon. We can't. It's not. It's not for any other website, so uh, Amazon does tend to be a little bit more expensive when it comes to when it comes to video games, at least the retro stuff. So I don't know how many of you guys will actually be interested in buying through Amazon, but if you're planning on it anyway and you use our link, it helps us out. So that's down there, top link in the description, and I put it in the last couple videos descriptions as well since that's when we have been talking about Moonlighter. But it's 9:22. Just waiting to get a couple more customer orders shipped out here at the store before we head home. And then we are going to be playing Moonlighter again. It's just so much fun. So, Abby's finishing up. Um, how many more do you have? This is the last one. I okay. Just, I screwed up on Nathan shipping, so, so I had to reprint it. She's doing the last one right now, so we're going to be heading home here in just a couple minutes. But I'm very excited. We both are addicted to this game, and it's just so much fun. So that is pretty much going to be it for today, guys. Abby and I, next day right now, obviously. Abby and I went home last night, played a bunch of Moonlighter. My game did not crash once, which I'm very happy about. And I made a ton of progress in the game. Uh, I ran into something kind of frustrating, and I feel like if you guys are thinking about getting the game, you should probably know about it. And it's a known... I guess it's not even an issue, but... Like, it's not a bug, but it seems like it. Um... In the game, when you price things in your store, they don't have a set price. You have to price things at whatever you want, then you have to pay attention to the customer's reactions to those prices, and then from there, you can narrow it down to what an accurate price is, where they will actually sell and customers will be happy. So, when you put in a price and you don't know, let's say I'm gonna sell the screwdriver, I don't know what it's worth, so I'll put like 100 bucks, and then let's say a customer looks at it and thinks that the price is way too high, so I drop it down to like 70 and the customer still thinks it's too high, and then I drop it down to 30, and then it's too cheap and it sells right away. When you go into the like the item details page or whatever it is, it should tell you the price that, oh, 30 bucks was too low, 100 bucks was too high. So you can use that to kind of figure out what the price is supposed to be. And on the second dungeon, which is the forest dungeon, which is the one I'm on right now, a lot of the items 
are not recording the prices that people are either accepting or rejecting for whatever reason. A couple items are, but most are not. And it says that, like in the game, it actually says that the, the prices will not be recorded if the item if the item popularity is not neutral, which if you guys have played the game, you'll understand that. But basically, each item has a popularity level. It's either low, neutral, or high. So it looks like everything in the forest dungeon is in high popularity because it's new for my game. Like, it's new to the people in my town. So the popularity is high, so the prices aren't super accurate because it's a new item. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It's very confusing, and it's kind of frustrating because... Like, I know I have all the prices for all the items from the first dungeon. They're all set. You know, as soon as I, I don't even have to look at them anymore, I just put the item on the table. It puts it at the automatic price that I have saved. But with all the new items, I'm constantly changing prices, and I, I can't even recognize which items are the more expensive ones yet because the prices are not set. So it's a little frustrating. I thought you guys should know that if you're thinking about getting into the game. Um... I'm sure you can look up like a wiki and see what you should price things at, but that kind of takes some of the fun out of the game of figuring out your own prices. But figured I'd let you guys know just in case. But uh, yeah, it's going to be it for today. I'm going to leave you with a clip that I said I was going to show you a while ago. Um, Abby filmed at home. She filmed herself changing the screen on a Game Boy Color system and filmed the process. And I was supposed to show you like a week or a week and a half ago. And... We just, I just forgot about it, but I do have the clip, so I'm going to insert that here at the end. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do not forget to smack the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe, and we will see you guys again tomorrow.